lift every voice and sing till let in heaven ring ring with the harmonies of liberty let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies let it resound loud as the rolling sea sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us facing the rising sun of a new day begun let us march on till victory is won you may be seated and now we have a special video presentation of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I Have a Dream speech by Oakland University students. I am happy to join with you today and what will go down in history as the greatest demonstration for freedom in the history of our nation. Five score years ago, a great American in whose symbolic shadow we stand today signed the Emancipation Proclamation. This momentous decree came as a great beacon light of hope to millions of Negro slaves who had been seared in the flames of withering injustice. It came as a joyous daybreak to end the long night of their captivity. But 100 years later, the Negro is still not free. 100 years later, the life of the Negro is still sadly crippled by the manacles of segregation and the chains of discrimination. 100 years later, the Negro lives on a lonely island of poverty in the midst of a vast ocean of material prosperity. 100 years later, the Negro is still languishing in the corners of American society and finds himself in exile in his own land. So we have come here today to dramatize a shameful condition. In a sense, we have come to our nation's capital to cash a check. When the architects of our republic wrote the magnificent words of the Constitution and Declaration of Independence, they were signing a promissory note to which every American was the full heir. This note was a promise that all men, yes, black men as well as white men, would be guaranteed the unalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It is obvious today that America has defaulted on this promissory note insofar as her citizens of color are concerned. Instead of honoring this sacred obligation, America has given the Negro people a bad check. A check which has come back marked insufficient funds. But we refuse to believe that the bank of justice is bankrupt. We refuse to believe that there are insufficient funds in the great vaults of opportunity of this nation. So we have come to cash this check. A check that will give us, upon demand, the riches of freedom and the security of justice. We have also come to this hallowed spot to remind America of the fierce urgency of now. This is no time to engage in the luxury of cooling off or to take the tranquilizing drug of gradualism. Now is the time to make real the promises of democracy. Now is the time to rise from the dark and desolate valley of segregation to the sunlit path of racial justice. Now is the time to lift our nation from the quick sands of racial injustice to the solid rock of brotherhood. Now is the time to make justice a reality for all of God's children. It would be fatal for the nation to overlook the urgency of the moment. This sweltering summer of the Negro's legitimate discontent will not pass until there is an invigorating autumn of freedom and equality. 1963 is not an end, but a beginning. Those who hope that the Negro needed to blow off steam and will now be content will have a rude awakening if the nation returns to business as usual. 
there will be neither rest nor tranquility in America until the Negro is granted his citizenship rights. The whirlwinds of revolt will continue to shake the foundations of our nation until the bright day of justice emerges. But there is something that I must say to my people who stand on the warm threshold which leads into the palace of justice. In the process of gaining our rightful place, we must not be guilty of wrongful deeds. Let us not seek to satisfy our thirst for freedom by drinking from the cup of bitterness and hatred. We must forever conduct our struggle on the high plane of dignity and discipline. We must not allow our creative protest to degenerate into physical violence. Again and again, we must rise to the majestic heights of meeting physical force with soul force. The marvelous new militancy which has engulfed the Negro community must not lead to a distrust of all white people. For many of our white brothers, as evidenced by their presence here today, have come to realize that their destiny is tied up with our destiny. They have come to realize that their freedom is inextricably bound to our freedom. We cannot walk alone. As we walk, we must make the pledge that we shall always march ahead. We cannot turn back. There are those who are asking the devotees of civil rights, when will you be satisfied? We can never be satisfied as long as the Negro is the victim of the unspeakable horrors of police brutality. We can never be satisfied as long as our bodies, heavy with the fatigue of travel, cannot gain lodging in the motels of the highways and the hotels of the cities. We cannot be satisfied as long as the Negro's basic mobility is from a smaller ghetto to a larger one. We can never be satisfied as long as our children are stripped of their selfhood and robbed of their dignity by signs stating, for whites only. We cannot be satisfied as long as a Negro in Mississippi cannot vote and a Negro in New York believes he has nothing for which to vote. No, no, we are not satisfied, and we will not be satisfied until justice rolls down like waters and righteousness, like a mighty stream. I am not unmindful that some of you have come here out of great trials and tribulations. Some of you have come fresh from narrow jail cells. Some of you have come from areas where your quest for freedom left you battered by the storms of persecution and staggered by the winds of police brutality. You have been the veterans of creative suffering, Continue to work with the faith that unearned suffering is redemptive. Go back to Mississippi. Go back to Alabama. Go back to South Carolina. Go back to Georgia. Go back to Louisiana. Go back to the slums and ghettos of our northern cities. Knowing that somehow the situation can and will be changed. Let us not wallow in the valley of despair. I say to you today, my friends, so even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident. That all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that one day even the state of Mississippi. A state sweltering with the heat of injustice. Sweltering with the heat of oppression. Will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the contents of their character. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day down in Alabama, with its vicious racist and its governor having his lips dripping with the words of interposition and nullification. One day, right there in Alabama, little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted. Every hill and mountain shall be made low. The rough places will be made plain. And the crooked places will be made straight and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all flesh shall see it together. This is our hope. This is the faith that I go back to the South with. With this faith, we will be able to hew out of the mountain of despair a stone of hope. With this faith, we will be able to transform the jangling discords of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. With this faith, we will be able to work together, to pray together, to struggle together, to go to jail together, to stand up for freedom together.
knowing that we will be free one day. This will be the day when all of God's children will be able to sing with a new meaning. My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died. Land of the pilgrim's pride. From every mountainside, let freedom ring. And if America is to be a great nation, this must become true. So let freedom ring from the prodigious hilltops of New Hampshire. Let freedom ring from the mighty mountains of New York. Let freedom ring from the heightening Alleghenies of Pennsylvania. Let freedom ring from the snow-capped Rockies of Colorado. Let freedom ring from the curvaceous slopes of California. But not only that, let freedom ring from Stone Mountain of Georgia. Let freedom ring from Lookout Mountain of Tennessee. Let freedom ring from every hill and molehill of Mississippi. From every mountainside, let freedom ring. And when this happens, when we allow freedom to ring, when we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual. Free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Good afternoon. This is a momentous occasion for us at Oakland University. The 20th Annual Keeper of the Dream Scholarship Award Celebration is an event that we are so proud of to be a part of. I am Omar Brown L, Director of OU's Center for Multicultural Initiatives. We are honored today to have with us Kevin Early, founder of the Keeper of the Dream Scholarship Award Celebration. As Associate Professor of Sociology and Interim Director of the Office of Minority Equity at Oakland University, Dr. Early saw a need to encourage students to work toward interracial understanding and to recognize their efforts. For this, the Keeper of the Dream Scholarship was born. Dr. Early is now a criminologist and associate professor of sociology and the director of criminal justice studies at the University of Michigan, Dearborn. He is the author of several books, including Religion and Suicide in the African American Community and Criminal Justice in Michigan. In addition, Dr. Early is a senior consultant and co-founder of Early, Howe, and Associates, a consulting firm on diversity and organizational development. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Kevin Early as our Master of Ceremonies. Good afternoon. For 20 years, the Keeper of the Dream Scholarship has honored Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. for sharing his dream of equality and interracial understanding and for the amazing achievements he made toward that dream. Oakland University is strongly committed to honoring and encouraging cultural diverse student body. As part of that dedication, the university has recognized students who have demonstrated strong leadership in breaking down cultural stereotypes and for promoting interracial understanding by presenting them with the Keeper of the Dream Scholarship Award. It is a pleasure, a privilege, and an honor to be a part of this event an event that celebrates such incredible young people. Thanks to the commitment and support of the surrounding community and our corporate sponsors who provide scholarships to Oakland University students, we are helping to prepare a new generation of exceptional leaders. Young leaders who are inspired to carry on Dr. King's dream. Many of the past recipients of the Keeper of the Dream Award are here in the audience today. Would you please stand and be recognized? <laughs> T 
Today, we are pleased to honor three new scholarship recipients. You will have a chance to hear more about their accomplishments later in the program. We have an exciting program in place today. So let's get started, ladies and gentlemen, by welcoming Oakland University's president, President Gary Russi, to the podium. Kevin, thank you very much. Um, I'm going to get off script just a minute and pay tribute to Dr. Early. He's a modest man, and I always talk to him about he was key in establishing this event for this university, and it wouldn't happen without Dr. Early. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we celebrate 20 years. It started with his vision, his support, and while he has left this great university and gone to a wonderful university, he still supports us and is still active in this event. So Dr. Early, I want you to stand one more time for a round of recognition and thank you for 20 years of support of Martin Luther King's dream. Thank you. As Kevin said, we're going to recognize three outstanding individuals today. And these are individuals who work hard to promote the dream of Dr. King. But at the same time, they work hard to advance their own careers. And we will hear about how special they are in this university community. My role this morning is to acknowledge some very special people who contribute to the success of these students. And these are the men and women who serve in corporations around us that support the scholarships for the students over the years. So I'd like to thank the named scholarship sponsors, Barnes & Noble at Oakland University, uh, Beaumont Health System, and the Oakland University Alumni Association. Our appreciation also goes out to our dream sponsor, which is Cooley Law School. And I want to thank our Unity sponsors, the Oakland University branch of the MSU Credit Union and Dykema Law Firm. And I'd like to thank our vision sponsor, Towers Watson, for their support. Ladies and gentlemen, please recognize these very important people who work in firms that make a difference in people's lives through their scholarship support. So thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Russi. We will now move on to the scholarship awards presentation. I am privileged to present with Dr. Russi, Oakland University 2012 Keeper of the Dream Scholarship Awards to three deserving students. Benjamin Eveslage, Oakland University Alumni Association Keeper of the Dream Award. Benjamin is a sophomore studying international relations. He is considered a genuine role model for other students looking to get involved on campus. According to nominators, Ben's commitment to breaking down cultural stereotypes, promoting interracial understanding, and encouraging diversity awareness has clearly been demonstrated through his on-campus involvements. Prior to attending Oakland University, Ben lived in Ghana and worked in a small village facilitating a school lunch program. Ben's Ghana experience of discovering new cultures and bringing people together continued in his involvements at Oakland, including his participation in International Allies Organization as general member, vice president, and president. His pursuit to make a positive impact continued as legislative affairs director for student congress by organizing events 
such as Not For Sale, to raise awareness of sex trafficking issues, OU Day at the Capitol, and a speaking engagement by, by Dr. John Corvino on the gay debate today. Ben was also instrumental in bringing Imam Faisal Abdul Rauf to campus to raise awareness about the Middle East and the Islamic faith. In 2011, Ben was elected to the post of student body president and promises to continue to be an advocate for student rights. Now, here's Ben explaining what this award means to him. The Keeper of the Dream Award, to me, signifies recognition of the positive way in which I live. This includes striving to make a difference in my daily interactions, as well as being an advocate for global change. I believe my largest contribution to racial understanding in the breakdown of cultural stereotypes has been as an active member of the International Allies organization. Eventually, I became vice president and then president of the organization. I've been so fortunate to lead this group, who works to connect international and domestic students, as well as promote diversity and friendship between the variety of cultures, religions, and races that make up our student body. There have been many people who have contributed to my personal growth and became mentors for me. One person in particular is the Assistant Director of the International Students and Scholars, Petra Kanaki. Her unwavering support during my freshman year set the stage for my personal growth at Oakland and allowed me to see that I could make a difference for others. Petra has always believed in my abilities and supported my aspirations. Dr. King's vision is still alive and definitely needed today. Though we have come a long way to ensure racial equality, that is not the case everywhere, and to some degree, it is still not completely realized here in the U.S. His mission has inspired me to become a student advocate and to fight for global justice. During my time at Oakland University, there have been many prized memories. But the two that are most significant are my current role as student body president, and preceding that, I was the legislative affairs director of OU Student Congress. In each position, I had the freedom and support to design and organize programs for the student body in ways I never thought possible as a college student. I have grown in these experiences and learned to help others grow as well. I would like to thank the Oakland University Alumni Association for their generous contribution. This will allow me to continue to share Dr. King's dream and pursue my academic goals. We are pleased to present Ben Eversledge with the OU Alumni Association Keeper of the Dream Award. Tara Minchner, Barnes & Noble at Oakland University, Keeper of the Dream Award. When Tara Minchner enrolled at Oakland University to pursue a master's degree in counseling, her career and community focus was already centered on diversity awareness. At OU, she heard people sharing accounts of being bullied for reasons such as race, gender, and belief system, and soon became aware of the need to form students against bullying. Tara recruited from graduate and undergraduate programs to unify involvement in activities that release students from their comfort zones, cliques, and stereotypes. She also worked to create alliances with community members to think before we speak, smile before we roll our eyes, and care before we complain. A graduate student and author, Tara has written three books on self-esteem and anti-bullying. Her books have become part of OU's children's literature and young adult collections. Tara is a member of the Multicultural Affairs Committee and organized a visit from the Holocaust Museum to OU during the remembrance ceremony. As you can see, Tara works at her mission and has been able to break down stereotypes and change per perspectives on diversity-based issues. Now here's Tara explaining what the award means to her. This award means that I am truly a part of something bigger than myself. The call to be a leader in diversity is the call to serve the community in every way that I can in order to protect the foundation that Dr. King built. One of the most significant opportunities I've had on campus was assisting with the Holocaust Day of Remembrance. 
It was an honor to work directly with the Holocaust Center of Michigan and to be a part of spreading awareness about the ultimate result of hatred. Hearing accounts from a survivor of this tragedy reminded the OU community why diversity and unity are so important. My support system includes a village of people who helped me become who I am today and who I will be tomorrow. My mother, some educators, people that did not know me very well but still reached out to lend a hand. They all are a part of me and my belief system that encompasses hope for my community. They are a quilt of strong, determined, and thoughtful people who played a role in who I am. Dr. King's vision, passion, and faith will be relevant until the end of time. Diversity is like learning a new language. When you first begin, if you practice it, you will become fluent. If you let it slip, you will forget what you learned. We will always have a need to embrace diversity education in order to move forward. My most rewarding experience at Oakland is being a part of the Masters in Counseling program. I am a member of a large community of people who care about others and who consistently educate themselves on how they can help people out on a deeper level. Our professors, staff, and students showcase a dedication to diversity and inclusion on a daily basis. Thank you, Barnes & Noble at Oakland University for allowing me to be a keeper of the dream. Your willingness to sponsor education and diversity awareness displays your own personal dedication to this beautiful dream that Dr. King shared of service, unity, and kindness. Your books rock too. To present Tara Mitchner with the Barnes & Noble at Oakland University Keeper of the Dream Scholarship Award. Suba Hanif, Beaumont Health System, Keeper of the Dream Award. Whatever you pursue, claim it with passion. From a young age, Suba's parents instilled in her this motto as a way of life. Because of this, Suba says, no matter what opportunities I choose to participate in, whether in academics, extracurricular activities, or community service, I will always try to put forth my best effort and attempt to approach a project with enthusiasm. During her first year at Oakland, Suba attended the Summer in Medical and Dental Education Program at the University of Virginia School of Medicine. This national program was designed to increase the percentages of minorities pursuing medicine. Through this opportunity, she met students of various ethnicities and was able to learn new aspects about the medical school. Suba has encouraged other students to apply for this enriching experience and to obtain a better understanding about the medical school and in order to increase their success. Suba has also been highly involved as president of Alpha Lambda Delta Honor Society and as a member of Student Congress, the University, Senate, and the Muslim Student Association. Not only has Suba's passion centered on work on campus, but also in the community. She is now reaching out to a larger community in the Hamtramck to set up monthly women's health seminars to a diverse community. Coordinated on conjunction with Oakland University's William Beaumont School of Medicine, the clinic aims to educate women on the basis of healthcare needs such as vaccinations, screenings, and immunizations. It is clear that Suba has truly embraced the model her parents instilled in her. Now here's Suba explaining what the award means to her. Being awarded the Keeper of the Dream inspires me even more to continue pursuing my goals and discovering what I'm passionate about. I am humbled and excited that I have been awarded the Keeper of the Dream Scholarship. I've been able to meet students from diverse backgrounds through my work with promoting the Summer in Medical and Dental Education Program. This curriculum is designed to increase the amount of minorities pursuing medicine. Through my work in raising awareness for this program, I've been able to meet students from all over the United States and here at Oakland. I've learned something from each and every one of the students that I've encountered throughout the journey. But most importantly, I've learned that diversity is really the one thing we all have in common. 
There are so many people to thank for bringing me to where I am today, but I would have to say that my parents have been the mentors of my life. My passion for community work comes from my dad, and from my mom, I get my curiosity and perseverance. My parents are in the crowd today, and I owe all my success to them. Together, these two have shaped me into the person I am today. Thank you so much, Mom and Dad. I remember sitting in my third grade class, listening to Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech. And I remember being amazed at the passion, faith, and versatility in his voice. I feel that his vision is still alive today. Yes, it is true that we have segregation in different ways in different parts of the world and in America. But we know that he did say, all progress is precarious and the solution of one problem brings us face to face with another problem. Dr. King's vision of nonviolence, love for yourself and each other will help guide us in overcoming yet another problem. My involvement as president of Alpha Lambda Delta Honor Society, Student Congress, Muslim Student Association, University Senate, and the Honors College have all contributed to my enriching experience at Oakland. Being involved with a wide array of student organizations has allowed me to experience and learn something from each student that I've met. To be able to help someone or point them in the right direction is the most rewarding experience of all. Oakland University William Beaumont School of Medicine, thank you so much for honoring me with this award. You are truly empowering the next generation of leaders and scholars. I promise you that you have definitely made a worthy investment. Please present Suga Hanif with the Beaumont Health Systems Keeper of the Dream Scholarship Award. Congratulations to our scholarship recipients. They are exceptional in their accomplishments, commitment, and motivation, and clearly deserving of this recognition. We would now like to take a moment to recognize Dr. Kevin Early for his support to this university. To those of us at Oakland, his dedication to students and continued commitment to the OU campus community has made a great impact. As Dr. Early joins me on the stage, for all of us who remember the past 20 years, let's take a quick minute and retrospective look at Keeper of the Dream during Dr. Early's time. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Keeper of the Dream Banquet at Oakland University. I'm Kevin Early, your Master of Ceremony. This evening is a time to reflect upon the way things were, the way things are today, and the way things could be with hope and understanding. The Keeper of the Dream Banquet was initiated to honor Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and his vision of justice and equality. The banquet raises funds to support the annual Keeper of the Dream Award here at Oakland University and to build an endowment fund that will provide permanence to this undertaking over time. Our sponsors listed in your program, we have added $25,000 to the endowment fund. If you recall the first banquet, there were probably about 300 people in attendance and we generated about $7,000. Eight years later, we are 700 strong, and we're generating much more than $7,000. <laughs> so thank you, all of you that have been there with us over the years. Thank you, thank you Dr. Early, for your commitment to Oakland University we want to present you with this plaque today in recognition of your vision and dream for Oakland University's Keeper of the Dream Scholarship Award celebration. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you, Oakland University, an institution committed to excellence and diversity. The right time, the right place. Oakland University is the right choice. Thank you, Omar. Thank you very much. It is indeed a great honor for me again to be with you today to celebrate 20 years fulfilling the dream. This is certainly an important award, and as evidenced here by the, this year's recipients, they're great individuals, and we look forward to hearing more from, from each of you as you continue fulfilling the dream. The students we honor here today and those we have acknowledged over the past 20 years demonstrate the very best in humankind. They are exceptional leaders involved on campus and in the community in order to break down racial and cultural stereotypes and to promote unity among people. I am so very proud of each of you and all of you uh, former recipients. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, every one of you, for supporting Oakland University's Keeper of the Dream Scholarship Awards celebration through your presence today, your scholarship gifts, and all that you do to share the dream and contribute to the dream and vision and journey that Dr. King began. Again, it has been an honor and a privilege for me to be a part of this 20th annual celebration and its ever-growing legacy. Free at last! Free at last!